right. Shalom. I'd like to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Baasham, Yahweh Shai, double honesty apostles, and elders of Great Millstone and rule well, and salutations to that came around the world that pushes truth in sincerity. A lot of people like to ask the question why it is all white people who have to go into slavery and not just some. You understand? Some might debate the fact and say that you know that we should forgive them for what they do. Which is rubbish, according to the scriptures in most I say that they'll have to pay for what it is they do. But then some might want to say why it is all have to go into slavery and not just the ones who did actually do the, the crime. So this is um, Isaiah 14 verse 21. It says, Prepare slaughter for his children for the iniquity of their fathers, that they do not rise nor possess the land, nor fill the face of the world with cities. So just like with Israel, when a man of Israel create transgression, the Mosai will visit his iniquity down to the third or fourth generation. So even through a generation, a man of Israel can even say to himself that he will get away from what does he do. If you do foolishness now, if time, if Mosai permit that you come back three to four generations after, you still have to pay for that. And it had many generations pass since Esau was afflicting Jake. You understand? This going back hundreds of years now. That many times these same the same Esau that here now was here in the past afflicting us the same way. And when they come back here, they're afflicting us again. So at some point in time, all of them that they had a part to play in afflicting us. So it's not just about the ones that the ones that pass. The ones that here used to afflict us in the past the ones that were here the, the second cycle was afflicting us in the past going straight back to the point where they actually started to have a certain slavery all of us them all of them had some part to play if they even if it was not a serious note they still profited off of our affliction and that is afflicting us because i know not one time in history any person of esau descent saying over i must stop afflicting this jake all of them prospered off of it. The scriptures go on again. I'll go to the Obadiah. Obadiah 1. I'll start from I'll start from 10, right? It says for thy violence against thy brother Jacob. Shame shall cover thee, and thou shalt be cut off forever. Now this is what the most I say is going to happen to all of Esau. Now as you can see who it is talking about because it said thy brother Jacob. And when Isaac made, his, made his, his two sons, it had Jacob and Esau. So it had no way of confusing that. It said for thy violence against thy brother Esau. Sorry, it's like here. It said for thy violence against thy brother Jacob. Shame shall cover thee, and thou shalt be cut off forever. So we just, we know who we talking about, who we talking about through the spirit is the nation of Esau, which is today the so called white man. You say in the day that thou stoodest on the other side, in the day that the strangers carried away captive his forces, the foreigners entered into his gate and cast lots upon Jerusalem. Right, and you'll see. This is something that happened back in 70 AD. You understand when they besieged Jerusalem and they carried them, they kill off a lot of them, and carried them captives, carried these, these survivors captives. They don't even like our people back in Jerusalem today. Them fools from, I think it's GOCC, who does who, who, who go back into that place? They just, they just, had, they just even had to stay on the outskirts. Intense, you understand? They don't, even, they don't even want our people back in that city. It's in the day that thou stoodest. So, are you sorry? Yeah, even and and cast lots upon Jerusalem. And I read it over. Verse 11 is saying, The day that thou stoodest on the other side, in the day that the strangers carried away captive his, his forces. 
and foreigners entered into his gate and cast lots upon Jerusalem, even thou wast as one of them, because this is something that they did to us. You understand? You see, but thou shouldest not have looked on the day of thy brother in the day that he became a stranger. Neither shouldest thou have rejoiced over the children of Judah in the day of their destruction. Neither shouldest thou have spoken proudly in the day of, of distress. You see, at the children of Judah, because back in that time, it was mostly Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, which was classed as Judah or the Jews at that time when they went and besieged Jerusalem. I'll stop at what 12? I don't remember the scripture I was going on, Paul. Zechariah 2. I'll start from 7 and say, Deliver thyself, O Zion, that dwellest with the daughters of Babylon. Right? Because we dwell in the daughters of Babylon right now. Or the scriptures refer to them as Mystery Babylon. You say, For thus saith the Lord of hosts, After the glory has he sent me unto the nations which spoiled you for he that touched you touched the apple of his eye and that is what it is they did they touched the apple of the Mosai's eye they spoiled our people they take them out of place kill them rape them spoil them by teaching them new beliefs and philosophies and taking away the ordinance away from us and how we were supposed to be it's like the scriptures talk about being discontinued from my heritage. They took all of that away from us. Alright. Alright, go back to Obadiah 1, verse 13 and say, Thou shouldest not have entered into the gate of my people, say the most I say, my people, in the day of their calamity. Yea, thou shouldest not have looked on their affliction in the day of their calamity nor have laid hands on their substance in the day of their calamity they lay hands on us and they took our substance they took our land they took our riches they took the holy things of the Mosai's priesthood similar similar like to what had happened in um in in daniel with nebuchadnezzar nebuchadnezzar grandson you understand they took once again once again, the holy vessels of the Mosai was taken away from us and all the riches. Verse 14 it says, Neither shouldest thou have stood in the crossway to cut off those of, of his that did escape. Neither shouldest thou have delivered up those of his that did remain in the day of distress. Because even the ones who, who was there, who didn't who fight, they kill them. The ones who survive, they take them hostage. The ones who escape, they chase behind them and sell and sell them as slaves or took them as slaves for themselves. You understand? So they afflict we people 360 all the way, all the way around. Even if I'm even if one or two might have remained and get a hide in the bush. When they did make children, at some point their children was even afflicted. Why it be by the civilization they was living in, or however, they afflict we people constantly, right through. So verse fifteen is say, for the day of the Lord is near upon all the heathen. For the day of the Lord is near upon all the heathen, as thou hast done. It shall be done unto thee. Thy reward shall re shall return upon thine own head. And there's something they even repeat in um in Revelation. It's a reward as she has rewarded thee and double. You understand? They go in and actually face the same thing that happened that happened to us. That they did to us. When the Messiah returns, he's going to come just like how they came into Jerusalem, besieged it, kill. And whoever did remain had them as slaves, when the Messiah returns, is going to come, besiege their whole kingdom. And whoever whoever remain, 
they are going to be slaves same way just was I say for as ye have drunk upon my holy mountain so shall all the heathen drink continually yea they shall drink and they shall swallow down and they shall be as though be as though they had not been because as the scriptures talk about they say babylon that caused all the to, to, um, to drink as she wine of fornication all of them that helped babylon and had a part to play in the things that babylon did to us so the same way esau going and have to pay for what they do for helping the other nations will have to pay for what they do also you understand they say but upon mount zion shall be deliverance and there shall be holiness and the house of jacob shall possess their possessions so all our things we're going to get back we're going to get back everything that did belong to us and even things that belong to the heathen we're going to get also you understand because the scriptures say the world was created for israel for, for, for israel's sake so everything going to belong to israel the heathens go get back the possession of the land and so forth after the silver time of slavery but they would never be like israel see verse 18 and say and the house of jacob shall be a fire and the house of joseph a flame and the house of Esau for stubble, do you understand? Going and destroy them. First a thousand years of slavery, hardcore slavery, and after that period of time, destruction. And they shall kindle in them, and devour them, and there shall not be any remaining of the house of Esau, for the Lord had spoken it. So Esau going and be completely destroyed. It had nothing about why it have to be all why it can't be some the most i say esau which pertains to the entire nation is going to be completely destroyed they say will have none remaining after that period of time they will have to pay first for what they did and then after that they will have none remaining of them thus say the lord you understand a man of faith knows that it have nothing like it will be some or why the, you can't just forgive them no it have nothing like that you understand any fool ever asks you something like that ask them why it is esau still killing out your people today why do why do they let it go anyway with that i like to give all praises honor and glory to yahweh basham yahushai double honors the apostles and elders of great millstone and rule well and salutations to the Akim around the world that push the truth in sincerity. Shalom.